Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Tonight, I'm going to be reviewing from Moreland, their Old Hoppy Hen. Now Moreland, um, who I think are actually owned by Green King these days, amazing now most of the companies, uh, the bigger breweries are owned by one or two. So obviously you've got Old Speckled Hen, you've got Hen's Tooth, You've got old, is it Nutty Hen? Old Spooky Hen? Old Crafty Hen, which is the stronger bear. And then you've got Old Hoppy Hen. So, I can't read that right, it's just too small. This delightful bitter pale ale bursting with tropical flavour and citrus notes skillfully blends the sensitive characteristics of four premium hops including American Chinook which has a bit which has a hint of fresh grapefruit so I have had this before it's a 4.2 percent uh, crisp pale ale yeah I've had it before uh, can't remember you know it's been years I drank that so drank so many that you know it's obviously not one of them that's in the top echelon but uh, we'll pour it out and uh, see how it goes. Third day review of the night. Not at work tomorrow. It's beer festival day. So, uh, got to start as you mean to go on, haven't you? Okay. I've ring ringed 30 beers that I'd love to try tomorrow. I'm going to limit myself to a third of a pint of any beer because I don't want to get steaming too quickly. Yeah, that's the plan. It's not going to work. So on the nose, out the, straight out of the bottle, on the nose, not much there at all. Slight hoppiness, but that's it. If you're going to call something old hoppy and then, you know, it's got to be, well, as you'd expect. So, colour-wise, I'd say an amber gold colour there, Love, massive head on it, you know, decent white head. Again, not a massive amount on the nose. Um, it's, it's, it's more of a hint of citrus and a hint of hops than anything, you know. I mean, it's not it's not calling itself um, Hop Bomb, which one ale that I reviewed did, and it was Hop Bomb. It must have been a very small blooming bomb. So for me, ooh, now I've only had two and I'm already starting to go. Um, for me, this is a, a, a cross between, uh, I would presume, like Old Speckled Hen, which is a 5%, if memory serves me right. And obviously a more hoppy variant. So here it says, aroma, tropical notes of grapefruit. Well, if it is grapefruit, it's very... Uh, low. So, taste. Fresh grapefruit, light and satisfying bitterness. Okay. We shall see. And a good thing with this is not to... Um, you don't want to be taking your review from the first few sips because, as you all know... It's only when you get down to two thirds of the way down the pint that you it, everything starts to come, you know, to fruition. Oh. Good after bit aftertaste bitterness, you know, it, it lasts in your mouth. You can really feel that ting tingliness. I mean, if that's what it actually is, I don't know. To me, um, initial thoughts, not an outstanding um, drink by no means, but certainly a good session uh, beer. Definitely that tingliness goes down, you know, it's um, 
got some poke to it. So, Old Speckled Hen, one of my favourites, you know, uh, the 5% bit. I absolutely love Old Crafty Hen. And uh, you've also got Ends 2, which is the fermented, it's the bottle conditioned version. And that's got a good kick to it, you know. If you've never had it, Morrison's, uh, I think they are the only ones who sell it at the Big Four. And uh, definitely worth a try, you know. Need to get... Need to be trying these ales. If you like the old speckled ends, try the range, you know, if you can find the range. Uh, old Nutty N. Um, I haven't seen that this year. More of an autumnal um, ale. Um, like I said, I've not seen it yet. And Old Spooky N. I've not seen that. I, I love the idea that... Um, they did do, I think, it, I think it was Old Speckled End in a more Halloween type bottle. Didn't really work, you know. Old Goblin can get away with that with their beers. Because Old Goblin, you know, is basically the unofficial beer of Halloween. And, uh, you know, that's their thing. Uh, but they did bring out an Old Spooky End last year, which was, a, I think it was a pumpkin flavoured ale. And uh, we had a right job getting it. Ended up going to co-op in the end and uh, a bit of a struggle to get it God, I could have sent blooming with my workmate in there today because she's always walking around shops just to see if they've got it so now I didn't know until I started doing this beer reviews that um, Moreland, the people who make Old Speckled Den, are actually owned by Green King. And it's funny because when I was in Sainsbury's working for them on the Bears, Wines and Spirits Department, you know, what a classy job, you know. If you can get to any supermarket and as long as you're not stuck on the chuffing tills, because these days it's all about the tills, but if you can be working on that department, stocking them up and get your interest into it, or work in a micro pub or in a brewery. You know, if you've got a, an interesting beer, I wholly suggest doing it. I did five years at Sainsbury's and uh, I enjoyed it, you know. The hours, you know, they, they want the best hours. to lose out on a lot of social stuff. I mean, nowadays I've got no mates, so, yeah. <laughs> um, no mates that I'd actually call mates anyway. But, um yeah, you lost out on a lot of social stuff. But, you, you know, you talk to a lot of people. And there's a lot of nice people who go into shops. Yes, you do get the um, AOs. But there's a lot of really nice people from all ranges who drink beers. And, you know, you get chatting to them. And, you, you know, once you get a bit, you know, start chatting to them about wines, beers, spirits. And it's amazing, the knowledge, you know. And the knowledge that you get yourself. I mean, I've been on beers, wines and spirits courses, wine courses. And, you know, because I've got an interest and I genuinely have got an interest. I won't be doing these beer reviews if I didn't have an interest. But um, massively got an interest. I mean, I want to brew my own spirits at some stage. It's it's the next step. I've brewed beers. I've brewed wines, lagers, ciders. Uh, I've done some spirits, but only the ones where you can go up to 22%. So, um, the next step is to get an air still. And then you, what you do is you get um, a fermentation bucket. You brew this, basically it's like a vodka, but they call it wash. And you brew this wash and it goes up to 22%. And it's like a nasty tasting vodka. And it is, it's rancid. And, uh, and then you put it through the air still. And that distills it basically and then you can use this three different companies that brew that have got um basically it's little bottles of concentrate so you get this wash and you make it it makes it up to say 60 70 percent alcohol so you have to actually water it down which is really strange because you just brewed you just distilled it up but other it'd be too strong otherwise and uh so that 23 litres that you've done of the, the wash actually distilled down to quite low, you know, distill. 
and then you buy, say, Still Spirits, they're the, the brand leader, and you can buy anything from whiskies, gins, vodkas, you know, anything, you name it, they do it. And you do that one litre of it, and it's, it's bang on, it's shop quality, you know, definite shop quality. And uh, it works out to something like a fiver a bottle for a litre of spirit. So what you're paying at supermarket, on offer you're paying 16 quid minimum for a litre of any uh, spirit these days. So to do that for such a price, you know, it is good. You know, like anything, do a lot of reading up, you know. Um, if you're going to go down that route. I haven't gone down that route yet, even though I've been a home brewer for, oh God, about 11 years now. Even back to my old um, city council days. Um, you know, I brewed, I brewed beer there. And, uh, <sighs> but uh, yeah, it's definitely a road I want to go down because then you've got the room to experiment, uh, like brewer, Brew Malibu, a coconut rum, but brew it at 40% instead of the 21%, you know, and butterscotch liqueurs. I tell you what, you, you go on the internet, you type in still spirits and you see what they do, you know. I mean, the kit is um, um, oof, about £160 for the air still. So the initial outlay, like when you start brewing, the initial outlet is a tad expensive, but once you've done so many brews, then the price has come down and you're brewing for nothing, you know, or very little. And uh, definitely worth it. Anyway, back to this beer. Sorry for going off on a tangent. But like wines, sometimes it's good to let a beer age and you know, you pour a bottle of wine, you leave the lid off the wine, you let the, the glass, the what's in the glass age, as it were. You wouldn't do that with lager because you'd just neck it. Same with cider, I suppose. And uh, the longer it's in, and the longer you drink it, the more the flavours come out. Which is in some ways, I'm going to a beer festival tomorrow, Robin Hood Beer Festival in Nottingham. And I want to try something like 30 different beers. And the problem is that if I have half a pint of each, I'm going to be ill. You know, 15 pints of beer, you know, it, it's not doable. But if I have a third of a pint, then it's like 10 pints. 10 pints is doable, although I'm still going to be drunk. And the thing is there is, obviously I'll have a, I'll have a, I'll have a, I'll have a big dinner before I go out. I'll have, a, I'll have something to eat while I'm there. And hopefully my mate is going to stop the distance, you know, stops at about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you know. I don't know. We'll see how we go. See if we meet up with anybody else. Because you never know. You never know with these beer festivals, especially if we could start chatting. And obviously doing beer, these beer reviews, I'm, it's, I can chat a lot when I'm with the right person chatting about the right thing. And other times I'm as shy as they come, but I know. So, this, you know, the more the more it's going down, it's getting more enjoyable. But let's put something to bed straight away. If you're looking for an op explosion, you ain't going to get it. It's it's just, a, to me, it's just a, a hoppier version of Old Speckled Den. It's like Old Speckled Den with hops on. But not, you know, not... It's more for the um, mainstream rather than for the craft brewer, craft industry, you know. Them that are going to uh, brew a beer that's an op explosion, basically. Definite grapefruit in the taste. Hmm. So, 
For a beer from one of Britain's um, biggest selling breweries, I'm talking about Green King, and obviously Moreland are the people who make the old speckled um, and the variants. Um, for me, old Hoppy M, not quite as, uh, doesn't quite live up to the Hoppy uh, title. Um, but for a beer, I'm going to give it a 4.1. I thought it was a nice beer, not quite as hoppy as it as, as the title suggests. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's still nice though, it's still very drinkable, good on keg. You know, if you can get it on in on cask, wow, I'd love to try that. But yeah, not a bad beer at all. Um, good tasting, good aftertaste, not much on the aroma. Uh, and certainly not as oppy as the, as the title suggests, you know, as the name suggests. Right, thanks for watching, and 16 minutes for a review. Wow, don't I waffle on. Thanks for watching, see you soon.